Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in the second part on data sets, we are going to look at the real world data sets that are available with scikit-learn. And here is a list of the data sets that we'll be looking at. Uh, to see what's in it is just a brief overview. The first data set is the Olivetti Faces data set. And this data set has around 400 samples or records. That means each record is one image. And there are uh, 4096 features. That is, each image is 64 by 64 pixels. And therefore, uh, when we uh, unravel that particular array, we get 4096 columns and those would be features and then there are 40 classes so as you can see in this data frame below uh, these are the columns 0 through 9 are shown but they'll go all the way up to 4096 uh, and this is 4096 here is the target column because uh, we are starting with 0 so 4095 would be the last pixel for each image and then 4096 is the target column that I've added on to this data frame, which has 40 classes. And uh, here I've added a short snippet of code that shows uh, how to load that particular data set. In previous uh, video, we saw that we use the load command. Here we are using the fetch, the fetch underscore Olivetti underscore faces that will pull all the data and put it in the variable data right here and the, uh, one another item to note here is that the values are automatically converted by the loader within the scale of uh, within the range 0 to 1 and therefore we see all the values are closed and here is one example where we are uh, we are looking at an image that is at uh, uh, at the index 77 and this is the image shown here on the right hand side which is a 64 by 64 pixels and if you pull uh, the very first row of pixels uh, that is magnified here and uh, so the values for the grayscale values are then shown by these numbers that are listed in the table and then and then uh, this particular uh, seven is represents the class for that particular. Next, we have the 20 news groups text data set. And this data set has about 18,000 records, 20 classes. And this data set again can be loaded by using this command right here page underscore 20 news groups and the data after you load it it'll look as shown here so this is just uh, one sample from the data set where we have a text uh, text data set that is shown here and email message and each of these email is categorized into a specific class and there are about 20 classes and if we if here we can pull the data uh, as in a raw format shown here or we can get in a, it in a ready to use vectorized form by typing fetch underscore 20 news groups underscore vectorized so here we have all the uh, words uh, uh, represented by each of these columns and then each sample uh, depicting either zero or other value uh, suggesting if that word is present or not that particular uh, text and on the last column i've appended here that's the target column which is the class column so uh, this is not closed so after adding to the data frame they have converted to code but they would be just and these are the labels for the targets, 20 targets. So in the previous slide, we saw data.target output, which was 
17, 7, 10, etc. So uh, each of these the numbers represent a label. For example, 7 represents rec.autos, 17 represents hawk.politics.mideast. So these are the categories or classes for each of those texts. Now, to make the uh, analysis or model more realistic, there's a recommendation in the scikit-learn docs that is to uh, strip the metadata from each of those text uh, data text uh, samples that are in the data. So that can be done automatically by specifying remove is equal to headers, footers, and quotes. So what this does is uh, it makes it difficult for the uh, model to train in the sense that you'll avoid overfitting because if there is a head specific header for each class that easily identifies that particular uh, email belonging to that class then we are not really looking uh, put we are not really putting more emphasis on the text uh, itself but we are relying on the information header as header to do the classification if we remove those headers footers and quotes then maybe we are general the model would generalize more to unseen text and then uh, this is another uh, data set which is the labeled faces in wide face recognition and this data set has uh, uh, images that are 62 by 47 and there are th about 13,000 records and 76 classes and here is an example of a few of those columns but on the images on and on the last column right here that's the class so they're represented here the first image uh, at index 0 belongs to class 21 and to load this data set uh, the command is fetch underscore lfw underscore people now in addition to this there is uh, i'll show in the next slide there is a pairs command here is an example of here we have a picture of will smith and uh, the data at index 348 is here which shows the grayscale values and here we have half for that these again represents the values of the pixels in uh, in that particular image going by and in addition to the fetch underscore lfw underscore people there is another option which is pairs so what this does is it uh, pulls the data such that each sample is a pair of two pictures belonging to uh, be either belonging to the same person or not belonging to the same person i tried loading this but ran into errors so probably this needs uh, you to download the entire data set on your computer and then this command will read from that directory to load it on maybe jupyter node This is another data set which is called forest cover types. And this has about 500,000 records, seven classes, and 54 features. So here from zero to 53, those are the features. And then target is the last column, which is the seven classes. And to load this data set, have the command fetch underscore POV type and this again uh, can be used for classification this is another data set rcv1 that's the reuters corpus volume one and this is a large data set we have around 800,000 records 103 classes and there are 47,000 features so these uh the the uh, the data set contains about 800,000 news stories uh, that can be used for 
and yep so that's the rcv1 data set moving on we have the kdd cup 99 data set uh, this is uh, again a massive data set with around 4.8 million records 23 classes and about 41 features this are uh, shown here we have some of the columns shown here so you can see what the data looks like uh, we have some which are text uh, columns so we have one two three of those are text and these are integer numbers some are quotes then the final column is the target column there would be 40 23 classes and to load this data set again we would use fetch underscore kdd cup 9 these are some examples of the classes normal buffer overload load module etc so this is a good data set again to models get some practice then finally uh, we have the California housing data set a comparatively smaller but still substantial number of records at 20,000 records eight features and you can see those listed here we have target with uh, float and so this would be then regression type of data sets so you can train regression models on this to load this data set you would fetch underscore California housing so finally code snippet this is showing this here which is similar to what we have seen in the past week we have data sets is equal to data sets dot fetch underscore california housing that's one way to load it other way to load it is by using the return underscore x and y is equal to true that puts the data in x target in y then same thing here if we use the variable data then data dot data would give you the x values and data dot target to give you the y value uh, another point i want to make here is that in each of these methods that are listed here for fetch for each of these uh, data sets there are additional arguments that you can pass uh, that will allow you to allow you to uh, get the data either fraction of data or uh, you can get a resized data or you can get any other variation of the data that the loader is capable of outputting so you definitely want to check out what arguments each of these take if you are going to use so i hope this was helpful to you to give you just a brief overview of what type of real world data sets are available within circuit learn so one thing is very clear that we have um, not only small data sets but we have massive data sets with millions of records that you can play with while working with different types of supervised or unsupervised learning library please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you